Realizing when I was an artist, I mean, I don't think I ever did. I just, it's just something I always did and really enjoyed. And then as you got older, you know, you're in elementary school, it's mandatory, you take an art class. And if you really look with that rare mutant exception, pretty much every kid draws the same at that age. Um, the difference is that uh, a lot of people stop drawing. The difference is that I never did. When I got in middle school, uh, you know, sixth grade or so, I discovered comic books because my mother is a minister. And so every Sunday after church, I would go down to this little drugstore to buy candy or whatever. And I, and I bought my first comic book there. And I would go every Sunday at $5, which back then comics were 75 cents. So $5 would buy me six or seven issues. So I'd go and buy comics every Sunday. And of course, immediately I started drawing pictures out of them. And my father thought it was just the worst thing ever. Like, you can't make a living at this. You know, it, it's, it's, he always encouraged me to, be, to draw just didn't want me to do comics because he was convinced it wasn't real art. And I remember this was eight years ago. I got my first job at Marvel and I called my dad and I said, Dad, I just got my first gig at Marvel. I'm drawing Spider-Man. The, the change in his voice from, you know, well, you know, keep in mind, you know, you never know what this could do, how you need to have a backup plan, what's your backup plan? The minute I said I'm drawing Spider-Man, it clicked with him. He got it. And from that point on, he's been nothing but proud. We don't draw for ourselves. I mean, I don't, I don't think any of us do it. Any artist that tells you they do is lying. We all are thinking about what's cool, what are people gonna dig, what are people gonna get into. When I do the, the statues, the designs at Sideshow, I wanna produce something that I love and that's gonna be really cool to me. When I was a kid and would get the three and a half, three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe figures, I didn't think it'd ever get better than that. I mean, the articulation, the weapons, I was like, this, this is the pinnacle of toys. They can't, they'll never do anything better than this. And they've done so much better than that. I mean, this stuff, you know, beyond your comprehension. I guess when I, when I get these figures and these statues and things like that, I'm not only getting them just for their sentimental value, I'm also getting them because I understand the work that went into this. I got my Hot Toys Wolverine. First thing I did was take his jacket off, turn it inside out. Because I wanted to see the stitching and how it was put together. You know, I uh, did the same thing with the Jedi robes from Sideshow because I wanted to make my own. So the first thing I did is I, I bought two and took one apart so I could figure out what the pattern was and all this. I mean, just little things like that. I just think it's really cool, just the fabrication of it. I like the idea of telling a story in a statue, and Adam did it first with Mary Jane or with Black Cat, and I wanted to carry that on because I think that's what makes him unique. I'm amazed at how often I read someone saying, I don't know much about the character, but I bought the statue because it was really cool. I think to me, that's the real mark if you produce something good. You know, if you get someone to buy something, they have no clue about it or anything. That's the kind of the underground cool market that this is.